six. That is crazy. A vehicle that gets 52 MPGs does a zero to 60 like that. I am a supercar owner, for those of you that don't know. I own a 2017 Acura NSX. Never would the words have come out of my mouth that I would ever consider owning a Prius. I would potentially own this car as a daily driver. 100%. What's going on guys? Car Review Guys here. My name is AJ and we are with the all new, freshly designed 2023 Toyota Prius. In particular, the tester today is a limited front wheel drive model. The only thing to go higher is the all wheel drive, but as far as amenities go, gonna have all of them. So you guys know the drill. We are going to start with the exterior, work our way to the interior, and then we're gonna take it on a drive and mixed in there somewhere, you're gonna have a cinematic that does, I like to think, pretty high quality. So without further ado, let's roll. I'll be honest this is the first Prius that I will ever say is a good looking car I mean it looks amazing and you know I'm not the only one to say that I don't uh, believe because it's uh, it's pretty much the trending word uh, for this car it looks amazing I mean you have the little LEDs down here you have LED runners that give it uh, a very unique design coming down the road uh, and to be honest, with the slope of the windshield, I mean, number one, obviously it's aerodynamic, helps uh, for the fuel economy. Number two, it looks aggressive. Like, it genuinely does. Even if we work our way over to the side profile, just take a look at how that windshield slopes. I mean, how cool is that? That is amazing. So on the Limited, you're gonna get 19 inch wheels. If you go for the uh, LE, then you're gonna get 17 inch wheels. The LE also gets better fuel economy because of the wheels. Unfortunately, you lose some with this, but these things look really good. I'll get you in a little closer there so you can see them. Love that design. And for the wheel arches, uh, even though it is black, it's like a gloss black versus like that cheap plastic look. So I really like that. That's actually a good little accent there because it even matches the mirrors. Underneath the hood, you're gonna get a total net combined with uh, all the motors at 194 horsepower. And zero to 60 is roughly seven seconds, obviously depending on real world scenarios and traction and whatnot, which is really impressive considering the gas mileage on this is around 52 mpgs on this exact model if you're going to get all-wheel drive you're going to lose a few to around 49 roughly nonetheless still super impressive and driver side fuel door 11.3 gallon tank it does have keyless entry as you can see here the three little dots you can also unlock it from the inside you'll notice there are no rear door handles per se but there is a little pad in here you just simply touch it and you can shut it back and you do have a manual release right there. So if your battery dies, you can press in on that and it will still open the door. Now, the other thing uh, that is pretty cool on the styling on this that you may not notice is right here. It goes like right there and then it cuts upwards, um, which I'm sure is part of aerodynamics, but it gives some character to the side profile as well. On top, you're gonna notice that uh, it is all fixed glass. Uh, so from the inside, you have a panoramic view, which is uh, a nice little touch. We'll get into the interior in a second. Wrapping up, walking around the back side here, uh, you finally have a power hatch, uh, which is located right underneath, almost right in the line right there. Simply just press, up it goes. Love the Prius spelled out as well. Checking in here, it does fit one golf bag, which will go in that side and kind of sit caddy corner. Uh, it will not fit two. I tried that experiment, um, it, it doesn't work. Now, of course you can fold down the seats and then in which case you have a ton. You know what, you have a plethora of room. Uh, so it's kind of however you want to do it. So it is a little bit smaller back here, but it's not too, too bad it is uh definitely nice having the hatch where you can fold the seats down though so to close the rear hatch you're simply going to just press the button up there and down it goes 
without further ado, I think it's time to get in the inside, show you guys all the features there. So let's rock. Unsurprisingly, just looking at it, you can probably tell that this is sleeker than the previous Prius. That is hard to say. Uh, so let's see what it's like to get into the rear here. I'm five foot nine for those of you that do not know. Let's see, stepping down, just a little duck, not too bad. Not bad, respectable. And then of course I have a hat on, and it's not flat against my head. So if I like take that off for a second, we've got probably about an inch of headroom, roughly, and then plenty of seat room. I mean, I would say four inches maybe. Try to bring it up a little bit for you guys. Yeah, probably about four inches there. That seat is right where I sit driving. So you can sit pretty comfortably back here. Now, up above us, you've got uh, your little panoramic view, which we'll spin it around for you guys. So you have a little tab here. You just simply pull it and you can control it yourself. And then of course, there's the one in the front as well. So if you pull this, then you can have them both open. You just have a little uh, bar in between, but looks really nice, feels premium. Working our way down here, you're gonna notice that there are rear heated seats and further down, you've got two USB-Cs. The one thing that it is missing back here and I wish it had was uh, some sort of vents, whether that's over here or there. There are no rear vents. Obviously the cabin is not huge, but nonetheless, it, when it's really hot, like here in Arizona, it is super nice to have rear vents. Now, right in the middle, you do have a little pull down here. Got a couple little cup holders. The seats are a soft text material, which is basically just a simulated leather. Feels nice, soft touch, which is good. Over on the door panel, you have your handle and uh, this little locking button, I will say, I feel like has been in Toyota forever. Uh, the window switch is improved because even on Toyota, you have the little bezel right there, which makes it feel more premium. It's the small details that really separate uh, some cars. And this is kind, I mean, it's hard, but it's not directly hard. It's got just a hair of give. Not much though, not much. And then this is soft touch. I don't know if you can see it pushing in from my fingers, which is where your elbow is. And then this is hard as well. Uh, it's nice that it's not piano black, so I know many of you are going to be happy because you guys all complain about piano black. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the rear seat. Let's jump in the front. All right, testing the front seat here. Yeah, that's like really easy. Uh, I mean, unless you have issues getting kind of low, this car does sit a little bit low to the ground, but I mean, it's like any other sedan, so it's not bad. Checking out the interior. So I really like the design Overall, there's just a few things that I would change personally. And I think even reading some of the forums and stuff, I think some of you would like to see uh, potentially changed. Uh, right in front of us, you it is super nice that we have a display out in front of us now. Before, it was just all off to the side. Nice to have that seven inch display. The only problem is, is this is exactly where I sit. The wheel is like in the way of the screen. Um, and the wheel is already pretty low. Like I've only got, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches between my leg. So it's just one of those things, kind of the placement of it is a little bit strange. I think I'd rather have that pulled forward so I could put the wheel up and then I would see it between. And then I could have heads up display out there, which this does not have uh, currently. So small things, not a big deal. Um, and then over here, you do have a 12.3 inch screen, love that digital rear view mirror, which you can of course just turn off like that. Coming on down, you've got uh, heated seats, ventilated seats for both sides. Uh, the other thing that I would change is it is a single zone. Uh, it's not dual zone for the uh, climate controls. For your uh, audio, for those of you that like it, it does have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I personally don't use it, but nonetheless, it has it. Over on the left-hand side, you've got two settings for memory seating. Uh, you've got your heated steering wheel, automatic headlamps, way down below. You have got your rear hatch and your gas tank. And then again, the window switches feel more premium, almost like a Lexus. That is nice to have those little bezels. Again, small details matter. Uh, soft touch right here. Again, same thing as the rear. It is definitely harder here. Just a hair of like rubberized feel to it, kind of. Um, you're also gonna notice up there, maybe if you can read it, JBL, upgraded audio. 
Looking at the steering wheel here, it is kind of a unique design. There are a lot of buttons, but uh, I won't lie, I kind of like buttons. I'm a little bit old school, but I do love technology too. So you have your lane centering and adaptive cruise control. It works really, really well. All of your media functions uh, over there and along with your screen. This is how you control the screen up there. Over here, kind of hidden, you have the parking assist, so the car will basically park itself. Pretty cool. And your 360 camera, we can press that. And the camera quality is finally upgraded. Uh, it's so much better. Like, thank you, Toyota. I am so happy to report that is way clearer than it used to be. I am, oh, I'm so happy because I love Toyota Lexus. Their camera quality in the past has not been good. Finally stepping up their game. Working our way down, you've got uh, really like a Lexus shifter, if you will, but uh, also being implemented, obviously, in some Toyotas. ECVT, ECVT transmission. Uh, you have some drive modes here, which if I select through them, you're going to notice there's eco, normal, sport, and custom. Generally, I leave it in normal majority of the time. Right down here, you're going to notice uh, a couple of charging options to cup holders and then you have a little tab here you can pull that up hashtag hidden compartment one of the easter eggs in this vehicle and then the wireless phone charger is unique it works well because it has these little clippies in it and down there another one it says hashtag wireless charger so there are many easter eggs on this vehicle um, and it's pretty unique to try to find them the wife loves looking for them you do have some ambient lighting in here. It's flashing, obviously, on the camera. Uh, it's not doing that in real life. I think most of you know by now that's just uh, frame rate uh, for cameras. Glove compartment. You're going to notice a decent amount of space. The big old Toyota book in there. No issues fitting. Uh, right here, the center console. You have probably enough to fit like a tissue box or something like that. Two more USB-Cs. And the seats do look good. You can also get a gray interior. I would personally go gray, but this looks nice. Again, soft text material, feels good. Looking at the sticker on this vehicle, again, 52 MPGs. This is the limited uh, front wheel drive. And it has the few upgraded options right here. I'll try to get close if I can, um, but nonetheless, it has the premium package. Uh, grand total 37,494 is what we're looking at as tested. Without further ado, we need to get this all new Prius out on the road. Let's roll. So you're probably gonna notice right off the rip, I've got the GoPro there and you can see a little piece of the back of the mirror. I apologize for that, but this windshield is so sleek that it's hard unless I literally put it right in my field of view, it's hard to get a GoPro in there. Uh, but nonetheless, you guys have a pretty good view there. So we're gonna right off the bat, do a quick zero to 60. We have it in drive. Let's drop it into sport mode. Okay, and again, this is front wheel drive. So we might get a little spin. Let's see in three, two, one, go to the floor. Okay, just a little bit of spin, not bad. 30, 40, 44, 50, 60. Like, that is crazy. A vehicle that gets 52 MPGs does a zero to 60 like that. Like, that's respectable. 
so respectable. I, I am, and it only got a little bit of wheel spin. I expected just a little bit more, to be honest. That That is so impressive. Like, you guys have no idea. Like, let me be very clear. I am a supercar owner, for those of you that don't know. I own a 2017 Acura NSX. I've owned many other cars, uh, sports cars. Never would the words have come out of my mouth that I would ever consider owning a Prius. Ever. Let's also be clear, Toyota is not paying me to say anything. I can give an honest review as to whatever I say for this vehicle. I would potentially own this car as a daily driver. 100%. 52 mpg the only thing i would change is i would take a little bit less gas around like the 49 and go with the all-wheel drive if it was you know me buying it but they make it so obviously i can get that so it's not an issue and it looks good it feels good i'm impressed i genuinely i cannot be more genuine when i say that so as far as comfort goes, again, I do wish it had dual zone. That's one thing that really hurts because the wife and I are just on opposite temperature scales. I am on fire at all moments and she is freezing at all moments. Uh, so dual temperature is a big deal. Many of you are gonna type, it's a small cabin, doesn't matter anyway. It does in Arizona because when the sun's directly hitting you, having that AC hit you directly is a pretty big deal. Now, you have cooled seats, which is amazing. I, I love that as well. But the dual zone makes it way more comfortable in a cabin. So I'm hoping in the future model years, maybe we'll see that come along. Uh, but the seats are really comfortable. I love the feel of the wheel. It has a nice cushion, soft feel to it. Uh, the thickness is just right. Visibility, despite being sleek, is really good that surprised me i thought they might have sacrificed that with making this car look good but they ended up finding a balance the other piece to comfort in my opinion is the level of noise that comes out of this so it's one of the quietest toyotas i have driven um, from every aspect now you can hear a little bit of tire, like road noise, just because they're bigger uh, tires on this one. But it's very acceptable. It's probably the best that Toyota has to date, other than the Crown. The Crown, I think, is going to take the cake on that one. Uh, but as far as any other vehicle in the Toyota lineup, I would bargain to say this is probably the quietest, especially for a hybrid. Now, from a motor perspective, you can certainly hear the motor when you're jumping on it, but at cruising speeds, even at highway speeds, you can't really hear it. Also, wind noise, very down. Uh, you cannot hear much wind noise. So, the doors finally have a decent thunk to them too, like a little bit of weight. I've seen a few of the reviewers saying that the doors still feel a little cheap. I do not agree with that, I don't. Like, for instance, the uh, hybrid Camry, the doors just feel like they're made out of like plastic or something like they just i don't know they don't feel good when they shut still a nice vehicle but this thing in comparison is way better like in the sense of how the doors are so take that for what it's worth that's my opinion on it. i think it's way better as far as suspension goes uh hitting bumps and uneven roads it absorbs pretty well uh i'm not like i i I'm not like overly impressed on that side of things. I don't expect it to be crazy good, but it doesn't disappoint me either. Like I think it's very where it should be. As far as the steering goes, let's uh, let's do a couple of tests here. So just getting into this a little bit, a little power. Wow, I mean, the power, the power blows my mind. The the. Even with just front wheel drive, I don't know how much you can tell on camera. That was me pushing it to about 35 miles an hour, taking sharp left and sharp right turns. There's like no body roll, like none. Like this thing is wide enough that it's like planted. Before, I'm gonna be honest, you felt like you were in a toy car and you can, you know, I'm not trying to knock the old Prius. I'm just saying how good this is, like how much Toyota genuinely improved this car is crazy. But you felt like you were in a toy car and you were just gonna like tip it over. Like, because the wheels were just so skinny and it just, 
everything about this car is so improved. Like, I am not exaggerating. I just cannot believe this is a Prius. I, I can't. And I, you know, even some of my buddies, they still have that old school mindset. And they're like, I ain't getting in no Prius. Come on, man. It, you know, times change. This thing is no longer the average Prius. And again, one more time, I'm not just saying that. I genuinely mean it. Okay, I think that pretty much is gonna wrap up this review. Overall, very impressed. Very impressed, especially for the price tag. You can get this vehicle even with all wheel drive for right around that 40,000 mark. Still getting around that 49 MPG mark. Insane. Next video is going to be the five things to love and the five things to improve. Uh, I do that on every single vehicle. There's not a vehicle that uh, gets by me weekly without uh, that list. So stay tuned for that. That is going to be a shorter video. I try to keep those under 10 minutes the best I can. And uh, if you guys want to see uh, supercar content or any of that, be sure to subscribe as well. And uh, as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.